No, we were hoping to talk to the Labour MP for Rotherham, Sarah Champion, at this point. But having agreed to do an interview with us, uh, she pulled out this morning. We weren't given any reason. But we're joined by the UKIP MP, Mark Reckless. UKIP is, in a sense, the official opposition there, isn't it? You've got 10 of the council's 63 seats, a council dominated, obviously, by the Labour Party. Uh, the minister said that the next elections for the whole council will be in 2016. Is that soon enough? I think it would be better if we could bring that forward to May 2015 to coincide with the general election because I think that would give a chance of clearing out the previous regime of councillors at Rotherham and getting a, a fresh start early. Obviously we've got this intervention from central government and I, I support that happening but ultimately we want to see Rotherham and the people of Rotherham take control of their own affairs again and, and this time do it properly particularly for the, the children who were so, so let down by the previous regime. One of the reasons, one of the excuses you may put it for the failure of Rotherham Council, which was monumental, was apparently some of the councillors and the officials, they feared being brand racist because the, the perpetrators were largely, if not almost entirely, of Pakistani origin. They were uh, from a Muslim background. Uh, was that a legitimate reason? Um, I don't think it was was legitimate, and I, I don't think it, it should, should, should have happened, but I understand why the people acted as they did, because when people have previously m made that as a, a, an allegation, they have taken, and Cryer, for instance, in, in Keithley, but other, other less reputable uh, cases, there's been, been court action and you know, criticism and even people being ostracised by people who would, would usually support them. And I think the people who, and, and Cryer in particular, who blazed a trail on this, we owe an awful lot too, and we're now able to talk honestly about these sort of matters in a way we weren't even even five years ago, and I think that has to be good. Uh, according to the Casey report, named after the author, obviously, uh, someone called Janiga Akhtar, uh, who was the council's deputy leader before losing his seat last year, he had, she says, influence which could extended to the police. Is there need now for a separate investigation into the police in Rotherham? I think there may be, because I think many people yesterday felt that the South Yorkshire police got off very lightly, and they have, I don't know whether an equal share of responsibility, but a very important share of responsibility, as I'd also say with the CPS and the prosecuting uh, authorities. And the report yesterday from Louise Casey was about Rotherham Council. And my, my frustration rather is this, is the Home Affairs Committee on which I, I said we did a year's report that was published in June 2013 on, on, on this issue. And we identified a lot of these problems, and in particular... That's we made a House of Commons Select Committee? Yeah, report. this was June 2013 from the Home Affairs Select Committee, mm -hmm. and we looked at Rotherham and Rochdale, and despite the problems in Rochdale, we made a very clear distinction between Rotherham, where there was complete denial, and, and nothing was being, being done, we felt, and Rochdale, where they, they'd, they'd identified the problems, accepted that, and we're trying, at least, to make things better for the future. And we I guess that's why Rochdale Council still exists, and Rotherham doesn't. Yes, but what I wonder is, you know, why wasn't action taken earlier? In our report, we, we, we questioned Ofsted and say, why on earth had they lifted the notice to improve on Rotherham Children's Services in 2011? We demanded that Ofsted come in and do an urgent report by December 2013, which I don't believe uh, happened. And we said that all these um, training, training, training and all these systems they supposedly had in place to deal with child exploitation, they said they'd now set up, actually they weren't meeting and they, they weren't happening. And we were okay. so critical of... Rotherham. And we did then get the, the, the J report, which was very good, but it wasn't until August 2014. And now we only get this in February 2015, okay. and all our elections only in May 2016. I just wish it had happened more quickly. John, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I know that area very well, because I used to live up there in the early 70s, and it was a very rumbustious working-class area. There was lots of work. Mm. Uh, there was very little immigration, uh, and a lot of the immigration at that time was absorbed into the community. We've got to remember that historically, Jews, Irish people, Scottish people coming down here, they've always been absorbed historically. But since the Second World War, we've had some real tranches of people who've come in and who've kept themselves away and the white middle-class establishment have kept themselves away. I think the real problem is, and I think it is about the breakup of the family, why would you ever allow a local authority or anybody in the state mm. to look after our troubled children? Why would you do... I was in local authority... Well, I was in a mm. Catholic orphanage, and I can only say I'm so glad I wasn't brought up by some of these dunderheads who... who, who, who 
somebody's on two or three thousand pounds a week. A child in Rotherham costs two or three thousand pounds a week. Can I, can I just, because we, we're running out of time on this, can I, in a sense, uh, this is an open goal for you now come these elections. You are the opposition. Labour uh, is in sackcloth and ashes. It's their council. Uh, they've appointed most of the people. They dominated it. But don't you have to be careful how you fight this campaign? I mean, you had a poster at one stage in Rotherham, 1,400 reasons why you should not trust Labour again. Was, was that a legitimate poster? I think it's legitimate to, to try and hold Labour to account at the ballot box, and that's part of the process you need to make local government operate better. I, I'm not blaming sort of Labour or, or blaming single party control for causing this, but I do think it did allow it. And I think what we do need is more political competition. And if you have these areas that are one party states, perhaps they can open up their selection procedures outside the, the party. And if they don't respond to what people want and they don't do things properly, then you see what we see in Rotherham, where sort of UKIP are coming through and holding them to account, which I think is right. And how our democracy works. But can I just take up a point Very from, briefly because from we're, John? We're run out it wasn't time. just children in care. We, we spoke to one 14 year old survivor on our Home Affairs sort of committee mm -hmm. investigation, and when she went gone to the authorities in Rotherham and reported multiple rape, all that happened was, was Rotherham to, 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 told them, went to see her parents, and said what the parents do is they should repay the alleged abusers okay. 500 pounds for drugs and alcohol they'd bought for this 14 year old girl. You know, it we, was just absolutely we terrible get it. what went wrong. We, and you're quite right to point that out. It involved a lot of kids who were actually with their parents. The parents couldn't do anything about it even when they tried to. They were you. arrested when they complained. Mark Breakfast, thank you very much.